When you think of a whale, chances are you're thinking of something like this. They're the largest animals in the history of life on Earth. But millions of years ago, some of them were much, much smaller. So this is Gyangesius delardii. What you're looking at here are parts of the skull of this animal. It's a new species, and it's the first one to be named from Australia in 20 years. While this fossil may not look like much, we know it's a mammalodontid, which is a group that includes another species, Gyangesius hunderi. From this specimen, we know that it has these very large eyes and a very short snout. Gyangesius delardii was almost certainly very similar in that regard. And we know from the fossil that it would have had a mouthful of very, very pointy, very, very sharp teeth. We can also estimate its body size, and we think this animal was 2 to 2.1 meters long. It could probably very uncomfortably have lay on a single bit. So while we can say that Jangusetus delardii is a baleen whale, it bears very low resemblance to a baleen whale today. Baleen whales are characterized by baleen, this structure in their upper jaw, which is made of the same material as your fingernails and your hair. Genghis delardii would have had teeth. There are whales today that do have teeth, things like dolphins, but Genghis is notable for possessing no structures we think it could echolocate with. Instead, this animal would have been hunting with its eyes, which were very, very large in order to follow its prey. We know Genghis delardii is a juvenile individual by looking at the suturing between the different bones of the skull in this animal, but one of the key ways we can know that is by looking at the teeth. In the teeth of adults, like Jangusetus hunderi, uh, the root canals are completely closed, but in Jangusetus delardii, they're completely open. Uh, these would have closed as the animal got older. But what's really, really cool about these teeth is that it shows this unworn tooth anatomy for this group of whales, which prior to this animal, we didn't really have much evidence for. This specimen was found by a member of the public, Ross Dullard, in 2019, before being donated to Museums Victoria. It was found in a sea cliff in Jangjuk, uh, which is a couple of hours southwest of Melbourne in Australia. We find so many of these early whale relatives in Jangjuk because about 25 to 26 million years ago, what is now sea cliffs was actually the sea floor. Twenty-six million years ago, it would have looked a bit different. In fact, to actually see what it was like, we'd have to go about seven kilometres offshore from where we are right now and drop down about 50 metres to the seabed. For that is what I'm standing on right here. These rocks, about 26 million years old, represent an ancient seafloor. And as you can see, they are absolutely littered with the remains of sea creatures. And just very rarely, the remains of the bones and teeth of ancient marine animals with backbones. So one of the benefits of Genghisius delardii being preserved in so many distinct parts is that some of them are actually small enough to go into a micro CT scanner. And that's really, really beneficial for studying the internal structures of the inner ear. And we can look at the inner ear and we can work at a whole bunch of things, but one of the most interesting is perhaps that we can estimate the hearing frequencies that this animal was able to hear at. Now, on the basis of this, estimate that Genghisius delardii was hearing at low frequencies, like modern baleen whales, probably about 20 to 30 hertz. They're most common in this part of the world. We do find one other species in New Zealand, um, but it's here that they seem to have been their most diverse and their most common in the shallow seas of Jiangjuk. We don't really know where they came from, what their origins are. To do that, we need to find more and more fossils, preferably from some older strata from further down uh, here in Jiangjuk. The discovery of the fossils of Jangacetus dullardii remind us of the importance that members of the public play in the discovery and reporting of really significant fossils, not just here at Janjuk, but elsewhere in Victoria. It could be you that finds the next extraordinary fossil discovery that changes our understanding of the history of life in Australia.